Hey team, these are the top five code tasks you should automate on your next project. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. First up, we have testing. There are a lot of tools in the testing space that can help you harden your project. Jest, for instance, is a popular one in the JavaScript world. You also have tools like Cypress, which can actually provide end-to-end -end testing running through an actual browser. Or you can take that a step further with visual testing with tools like Apple Tools that'll actually take snapshots of your project and let you know if anything has changed. One of the easiest way to do this if you're already on GitHub is to use GitHub Actions. They allow you to tap into an environment where you can run your tests or really any kind of task so that you can make sure that everything's passing before actually merging a pull request. For instance, if I wanted to automate tests inside of a project, I can create a workflow file, define where I want it to run, such as on push of branches or on pull requests of branches, and then I can use an environment like Ubuntu I can install Node, and then I can run my tests. If those tests fail, it can prevent me from actually being able to merge in a pull request. For number two, we have linting. While a lot of languages have their own linter, ESLint is a popular one for JavaScript. By installing the ESLint package and then configuring it to our liking, we can make sure that we're adhering to code style or even preventing bugs that ESLint would flag for us by running on our code. As an example, on their online demo, they're showing that they're throwing a linting error because this variable foo is never actually used. It's also showing that this variable foo is trying to reference the other variable bar, which actually is undefined. If you ran this in a project, it would throw an error. So by running ESLint, we can prevent these issues from popping up or having confusing variables that don't make sense by getting rid of them in our code. To automate linting, we can use tools like Husky, which can tap into Git hooks to make it easy to run our code tasks. After we install Husky, we now have access inside of the scripts of our package.json, where we can tap into those Git hooks and run whatever scripts we want. For number three, we have formatting your code. While we can actually use ESLint to format our code for us, Prettier does a little bit better of a job for going through the rules. The cool thing is it also works for a ton of different languages and it also comes with an opinionated rule set. So that means you can set up Prettier and as long as you're cool with its rules, you don't have to actually configure anything. Similar to ESLint, we can see inside of this demo where we have this code before it gets formatted, where after running through Prettier with all of its rules defined, it formats it out and just makes it a little bit easier to read. And aside from readability, the nice thing about this is having the formatting rule set means that your code is going to look the same no matter what developer writes it. In order to automate Prettier, we can go back to Husky, where we can use Git hooks in order to format our code before it even gets committed. For instance, inside of our package.json, we can define the pre-commit hook, and we can tell Prettier to run and write the changes every time that that pre-commit action happens. So anytime I go to actually commit code, before it actually commits, it'll first run Prettier and it'll write the changes, and then I'll add those changes to my stage so that they'll continue to be added inside of the commit. It's a great way to automate this kind of thing without actually interfering with somebody's development workflow. Next up for number four is deploying your code. Every time I make a change to my website Space Jelly, I don't wanna have to actually move files manually with something like FTP. If you've been doing web development for a while, you might have your favorite FTP software, like I used to use Cyberduck, but I really don't wanna to have to use that anymore. Instead, anytime I push changes up to the spacejelly.dev GitHub repo, I want those changes to automatically be deployed. The cool thing is some of the deployment solutions out there, like Netlify for instance, automatically handles that for you, and it even gives you previews of the deploys for different branches. But if you're hosting your website somewhere else, like Amazon S3, you might not have the ability to have those automated processes right out of the box. For deploying our code to something like S3, we can go back to our handy GitHub Actions. I can go ahead and create a deployment file where I can install my NPM just like before and actually build my application. And then I can use AWS Actions, which taps into the AWS CLI to deploy my site right up to my bucket. And I can set up these rules however I want. So anytime this change comes up to the main branch, it's automatically gonna rebuild the site and push it up to that bucket. And last up for number five, we have notifications. There's a ton of use cases for notifications that we can use for our tasks. Like if I wanted to automate an RSS feed of job postings, I can have those emailed directly to me with something like Zapier. But if I wanted to do something like work with the Slack API, where say anytime a pull request is created, I can post a message to Slack letting the team know. And for the final time, we're gonna go back to GitHub Actions. If I'm working inside of GitHub and I create a workflow, 
I automatically have access to events that trigger every single time a pull request is created. On top of that, there's a big marketplace of GitHub Actions that are ready to use, and one of them is post Slack messages, which gives us an easy way to add messages to our Slack with an API key. So I can say anytime a new pull request is created for my main branch, I'm going to run this command that notifies Slack by using my Slack bot token, which passes it into the Slack action, and post the channel of my choice, which I can use interpolation to add things like the pull request title or any other details that I want. And since we're doing this inside a GitHub, we really have a lot of options for what we can do at that point. So for instance, if instead I managed my open source community on Discord, I can go ahead and use the Discord API and post that message there instead. Or for another creative use case, I created this workflow called Content Reminder, which is open source on GitHub, where every single day, two times a day, I email myself a reminder that pulls off a piece of content from an RSS feed and emails me that content so I can remember to share it. With GitHub Actions, since we have access to the Cron API, we can schedule reminders so that anytime we want to try to remember something, we can use that API to send ourselves emails or other kinds of notifications. At the end of the day, automation is a way where we can get back our precious time by making the robots do all the hard and boring work. While testing, linting, formatting, deployment, and notifications are all really essential parts of a developer's workflow, there's a ton of things you can do with automation tools like GitHub Actions and Zapier. What's your favorite code task to automate and what's your favorite tool to do it? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.